This video was at the request of one of my readers. Um, I write mainly statistical studies on Seeking Alpha, so they sought me out and asked me this question. What's going to happen to the volatility of the market when the interest rates rise? So if you don't know, there's this woman, Janet Yellen, who is claiming that later in 2015, the interest rates are going to go up. Now that could be good or bad, but most importantly for us traders, especially swing traders, we want to know what's going to happen to volatility. The VIX, in other words. The VIX index. This is a measurement of the volatility of the market. A lot of people misunderstand what the VIX is measuring. They think the VIX goes up when the market goes down. It's not an inverse ETF. It's just a measurement of uncertainty in the market. So as the market had a mini correction um, late June, we saw the VIX spike up almost to 20 late June to early July. We saw it spike 20 and a lot of people who are very used to seeing the VIX at a very very low point and stable thought okay the market's crashing um, the VIX is going up so that means volatility is inversely tied to the market which it's not true as you can see the VIX is just a strange beast and of course it goes up when the market crashes because people are uncertain of which way the market's going so if you are a volatility trader or a swing trader, you really need to be familiar with volatility um, and you should probably track the VIX. So the question is, does the interest rate have any relationship with the VIX? So I sought out to answer this question. Of course, I first sought out an answer to the question if someone has already answered it and uh, I found two things online that basically say yes, but they're very poor answers. So I got two charts where people say, of course, and another one says, yes, here you can pre predict volatility with interest rates. Neither of these charts are good. Let's start with this one. This is an awful chart for one, two, three reasons. Okay. First of all, they took the VIX index and they converted it using a logarithm. So they took the log scale of the VIX index, which really doesn't make sense here. And even if it did make sense, they didn't explain why they did it. So what I think they're doing is um, curve fitting. And they even say down here, well, it looks like it might be a coincidence or an example of curve fitting. I'm going to tell you that this really is curve fitting. When you take a log of some, when you see someone take a log of um, an index or a stock and not compare it to the log of another stock, Generally, they're not doing it for a good reason. They're generally doing it to get a curve that looks good. So the creator of this graph just wanted a curve of the VIX that looks like the curve of this um, yield. Now, when do you take the log of something? When is it a reasonable time to take the log of a stock? Well, when you have two stocks you want to compare and you want to convert them into a, a, a scale where we're not looking at absolute returns. For example, if we want to compare Apple, which is trading at a hun over 100 bucks, to Microsoft, which is trading at about 30 bucks, we don't want to just look at the stocks directly. We probably want to look at the logarithms because that shows us the relative return of those stocks. But in this case, we're not comparing the VIX index with anything um, that's, that's reasonable in terms of what it's, uh, what it's absolute measurement or absolute scale is. The yield really can't match the index of the VIX. So that's problem one, this log scale, this unexplained log scale. Problem two is they've offset this yield curve two years ahead. So if we took this curve and looked at it normally, it shouldn't be here. It should be two years back. So what happened probably was they saw that it didn't match up and then they kept moving it over until they found a point where it matched up, which is two years ahead. Now, their explanation is that they're predicting volatility with interest rates, not interest rates with volatility. If you're looking at something two years ahead and you're saying, look, they match up, then you're implying that the VIX at this moment can predict the T-bill yield in two years which is the exact opposite of what they're saying here. And by the way, this is a three-month T-bill 
So why are we predicting what's gonna what it's gonna look like in two years? It matures in three months, so there's no reason to look out two years, right? So that's ridiculous too. So those are your three ridiculous aspects of this chart and why it should not be believed. So the first post that says yes, you can predict volatility with interest rates is invalid. Here's the second one where the guy says of course, and here's the chart. Here we're looking at the yield curve, which is the steepness of I may as well show you some data. I think I have, yeah. So here's um, some data. Here are the yields for each type of bond. And I calculated the yield curve for each of them, just the steepness of the, the curve, which is the difference um, when, you, when you graph that curve. So if you have a one month that's giving you a yield of 0.88 and a 20 year that's giving you a yield of five, then the difference between those is more or less the slope if you consider roughly 20 years to be a unit okay so here's what they got they've got that curve plotted and they have the VIX plotted now there's nothing wrong with looking at the yield curve in fact later in this video you'll see that looking at the yield curve is probably better than looking at the yield but here's two weird things they've done first they inverted it which means it's harder to explain and it means that obviously the graph that they already had didn't look good so they curve fitted, in other words. And second, they did the same thing as before. They did a two-year lead, which is saying the exact opposite again. It's saying that we are planning on predicting the yield curve based on the VIX, which is pretty nonsensical. Okay, So this one is, again, invalid. So I set out to answer this question by collecting all the data all the way back to 2004 um, of all of the bond yields, then calculating their yield curves. And they also collected all of the data from the VIX. So all of the closing and opening prices in the VIX were put into an Excel document. And what I wanted to do was pair every day one to one. So here's my VIX data. And I wanted to pair, for example, January 2nd, 2004's closing VIX to January. January uh, 2nd, 2004's uh, interest rates. Okay, um, But one small problem was that the markets, if you want to pair them, the markets aren't always open. The bond market is not always open the same time that the, uh, that the VIX trades on. Well, the VIX doesn't really trade, but it's not open the same time the stock market's open. So you have to delete all of those values where one market's open and the other isn't. But once you do that, you can pair them up pretty easily. And then you can run a test to get the correlations. So we're doing a statistical study. Um, and the hypotheses are simply that the null hypothesis is that the VIX is not, an, is not correlated with yield rates. And the second one we're looking at is, is not correlated with the yield curve. So we're doing this twice with yield rates and the yield curve. Now for the yield rate, I looked at the two year yield and for the yield curve I just calculated it all the way across one month to two years. Okay, So we're going to see if there's a correlation. We're going to use an alpha value of 0.05 and find what the p-value is. What we've seen is that we have tiny p-values, okay, um, which means that they are very strongly correlated. So yes, the answer is yes, the VIX is strongly correlated to the yield and the yield curve. But what are those correlations? Here is the correlation for the yield, and here is the correlation for the yield curve. I put this in a table somewhere. Or is it here? Um, in statistics, when you have a correlation of about 0.3, that's more or less the threshold for confirming a moderately strong correlation. So whereas the correlation here is a little under 3, the correlation for the yield curve is over 3, but I'd say that these are both pretty moderate. One interesting thing is the yield curve is positively correlated with the VIX. So as the yield curve steepens, the volatility should go up. But the yield is negatively correlated with the VIX. So as the yield rate increases, or if interest rates increase, the VIX should decrease. So it gives us a bit of a... Um, Mic these are mixed results essentially but I'm gonna say we look at the yield curve because it's more complicated 
and more things can affect the yield curve. Just looking at the interest rates and predicting that because the interest rates rise, the VIX is going to fall, isn't necessarily correct. And I've produced a image to show you all of the things that can affect the. Where are we? All of the things that can affect the the VIX and the the yield curve. So this is a better picture of what's going to happen. Um, what we're going to find probably is that the increased yield rates is going to lead to a depreciated dollar, which in turn is going to change what the yield curve looks like. So while interest rates are going down, the yield curve is probably going to steepen, and that's going to lead to an increase in the VIX. In addition, there's going to be, there's likely, well, these things are, you can look up these yourself. I'm not going to say right now whether these are predictable in the future, but as these things happen, for example, a drop in the money supply, drop in private savings, drop in exports, um, increased deficit, and increased private spending, the yield curve also steepens, and that should lead to a heightened fix. Now, drop in exports seems reasonable if the dollar becomes depreciated. Um, other things are, well, I'll leave them to you to determine what the yield curve is going to look like. But I'd say don't predict the VIX just based on the interest rates alone. Um, the yield curve has a pretty moderate correlation with the VIX, so the yield curve can give you some ideas as to how the VIX is going to change. But it's going to be a mix between what's happening to make the yield curve change and how people are looking at the market. So if people are becoming less confident in the stock market and starting to pull out their money, the VIX is probably going to go up and as people begin to trade again as summer ends the VIX will also probably go up. So how do you make use of this? Well you can't trade the VIX but you can trade a really crappy ETF that's supposed to track the VIX but really doesn't. It's called the VXX. If you look at the VIX it's pretty stable right? Well if you look at the VXX you'll see that anybody who has bought the VXX is out a lot of money. Let's go to max here. At one time, the VXX was at uh, over 7,000. Now, if you want to buy a share, it's only 10 bucks or so. Um, this is a very safe short, usually. Even now, it is, because the VXX ETF, just ETN, sorry, it depreciates all the time, just as how it was built. And it's a really piece of crap um, ETN. So avoid buying it. But if you are expecting a spike in volatility, there's a lot of other ways to take advantage of the VXX. And what I prefer to do, here's one thing you can do. An easy thing to do is just buy calls. Calls have limited risk. You buy them, and if the VIX spikes, you sell them and take your profit. Another th way to do it, um, if you're not sure, if you're not confident that the VIX is going to spike, you can sell credit spreads on the VIX and then buy them back when the VIX spikes. What this does is it allows you to get some immediate income. Um, you know how much money you expect to make at the beginning if um, it pays off. But also, you will take advantage of the fact that a credit spread has time decay. So you're essentially making money um, as you hold on to it, as long as the VIX doesn't decrease too much. And when it does spike, you've made all of the money you've made by waiting, and you've also made money because it spiked. So that's how I'm personally invested in the VXX and volatility. I have a credit spread, a long-term credit spread, and as the VIX goes down, I'm, I'm losing a bit of money because it's going down more quickly than I expected. I thought it would stay more or less even for a bit, but it's gone down from, I think I opened it probably in February. So I haven't made much money yet, but as it spikes, um, I could buy it back and if even if I could buy it back at this at the same um, where where VIX is the same I will still have made money because of that time decay so without further ado go ahead and do a little research on what you think about um, Yellen's claim that the interest rates will will rise some people say that she's just full of hot air it's really in your hands as to whether you want to believe her or not but once you do make that determination you'll be able to know some things about your prediction on the yield curve which will imply some things about the VIX.